Hi, in this video again we are going to take a closer look at the model, so how artificial neural networks are built. So we have been talking about in one of the previous lectures that a biological neural network can be modeled with the help of a directed graph. So we have the nodes basically, the so-called neurons or perceptrons, and we have the edge weights, basically the axons in the biological neural network. Okay, so we have the input with some values, x1 value, x2 value, x3 value, up to xn. And all of these neurons have some connection, basically, some edge. And we can assign an edge weight to every single edge. So this first input has the first edge weight, the second input has the second edge weight, and so on. And basically this, the sum function and activation function, is a neuron or a perceptron again. Because as we have seen for the biological nervous system, these neurons are connected. So we have some input neurons, and this is another neuron, and of course more than one neuron can be connected to a given neuron, and this is what's happening here. So we have an neuron that's going to connect to a single neuron, and what's very important that for a given neuron, this is a neuron within the yellow circle, we are going to have the incoming edge weights, and within the neuron, we have to sum up these edge weights, and then finally, the activation function gives the output, whether that given neuron has fired or not. So, okay, what are the edge weights are good for? They can amplify or deamplify the input signal. Let's suppose the fact that if the edge weights value is smaller than 1, of course it's going to deamplify this input value. If it's greater than 1, then it's going to amplify the input value. So it's very very important to see that what are the edge weights good for, they can amplify or deamplify the input signals. Okay, then what about the sum function? The sum function are going to multiply each input with the given edge weight, and we have to add these values together. So the sum function is going to do something like this. It's going to be a sum, and we have to sum up the x sub i times w sub i. So basically we have this x1 and w1, we have to multiply them together, plus x2 multiply with w2, and so on. So we have to sum up the input values multiplied by the edge weights, and then we have the activation function that's going to convert the output, so the value of the sum function. Usually there are several activation functions, the step function, the sigmoid function, the hyperbolic function. For perceptrons we usually use a step function. And this step function will output 1 if the input is higher than a certain threshold, and 0 otherwise. So what's very important to know that, ok, we can model biological neural networks with the help of a directed graph. But what's important that we have the neurons or the perceptrons with a given value. These are the inputs, x1, x2, x3, up to xn. Of course, every single edge has a so-called weight parameter, and whenever we have a given neuron that's connected to several other neurons, and we want to calculate the output, first we have to use the sum function that's going to sum up the incoming signals, and then the activation function is going to take this sum that has been calculated by the sum function and is going to decide whether that given neuron has fired or not. So whether the output is a 1 or a 0 if we are dealing with a step function. And what's the main difference between perceptron and normal neuron or we usually call it sigmoid neuron? That for perceptron it is a neuron in the neural network of course. We have to sum up the weighted inputs. For perceptrons, we use the step function with a given threshold. So that's why, because we use the step function, the output can be 1 
or zero. And that's why it's not going to work fine for neural network training because the output can be zero or one for any given neuron or perceptron. And why is it bad? Because a small change in the weights or bias of any single perceptron in the network can sometimes cause the output of that perceptron to completely flip from zero to one, for example, or from one to zero. And that flip may then cause the behavior of the rest of the network to completely change in some very complicated way. And sometimes it is not good. When we want to make optical character recognition, we want to make small changes. If we have a small change in the input, we want to have a small change in the output. Here, it's going to flip. One then zero, one, zero, zero, one, and so on. It's not going to work fine. But a sigmoid neuron is very similar to perceptrons, but small changes in the edge weights cause small changes in the output. So there's going to be no flips. And the inputs and outputs can take any values between zero and one. We are going to talk about activation functions, and we will come to the conclusion that for perceptron, we have the step function. For sigmoid neuron, that's going to work fine for neural networks, we will have the so-called sigmoid function. And we come to the conclusion that sigmoid function is very, very good because the output and the input can be any value between 0 and 1. And this is how we will be able to construct a learning algorithm that can detect, for example, faces, that can recognize optical characters, that can classify, for example, data sets, and so on. Thanks for watching.